Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Fauquier Schools with a, uh, another weekly update. We began weekly updates last week. Um, we'll, we'll do this every week for the uh, foreseeable future. So this update is for the week of June 1st. Um, the news I want to share with you today, you probably are, are, are well aware of it, and that is that the governor announced that beginning Friday, we'll, we'll shift into phase two um, relative to um, uh, restrictions and uh, associated with uh, the COVID-19. So um, first and foremost, yeah, we're excited that we're in, in phase two. It means more flexibility for sure relative to the use of uh, school facilities. Um, and so that's great news, but we, you know, basically what we saw was this, <clears throat> but the document itself pro provided by the state is a hundred pages long. So, and it's not just about that document, it's not just about phase two, it's about, you know, all phases, etc. But we're going to need time to digest uh, what's required and what is accept admissible or acceptable uh, under phase two guidelines. And that's going to take a little bit of time, so please be patient. I know people are really excited. I've heard from a lot of kids and parents about track usage and ball field usage, et cetera. And uh, I'm as excited as you are. So, it, but we've got to be, a few, few things have to happen first. One, we got to make sure we digest that document and make sure that we are um, right on top of what is and is allowable and what, you know, what, what the, what facility usage will look like, I guess. Um, so just give us a couple of days, please, and we'll put something out uh, for the sake of consistency, which is my next point. You know, it's really, it's critically important to us that from school to school, we have a consistent message. And that's going to mean, you know, putting information out to the media, uh, posting signage at each of our schools that um, sort of describes what is and is not allowable and what, you know, what, what precautions should still be taken even in phase two. And um, that will, as I mentioned, that's gonna take a little bit of time. So please be patient, but we wanna make sure we're consistent from school to school, because it's really hard to, you know, let that genie out of the bottle and then try to stuff it back in once you, you, know, you realize that you're doing things incorrectly. So we don't want that to happen. I also wanted to mention that um, you know, the guidelines are not optional. We'll, we will provide as much specificity as we can, but please understand that whatever we put out is in accordance with what the state is requiring and it's they're, they're not optional. So, um, you know, we expect that the folks who are use, utilizing facilities and, and going into our buildings and so forth are sort of following those rules and, and following those guidelines from school to school so that we, we, we do not want the, I think the worst thing that can happen is as, as these phases sort of evolve, that we end up with more illness um, and have to sort of draw it back. And, and, you know, we just, we do not want that to happen. So we want, we want to make sure that we're consistent. Uh, so that's that. So just be patient there. We're going to be having a couple meetings here today and tomorrow among staff, and we'll be getting more information out to you soon. Um, surveys. So we are working to create and then um, uh, deliver surveys for stakeholders, various stakeholder surveys, um, to better inform us as we move into the fall and we look at a completely and plan for a completely different landscape um, uh, associated with instruction and transportation and food service and building usage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's, there are a lot of details and we wanna make sure we involve stakeholders in sort of the de development of those details and the development of that instructional model and how we're transporting and how we're continuing to feed students and what extracurriculars uh, will, will look like in the fall potentially. So, and that's, we need, we need your input. So we started something today called the superintendent's question of the week, which is a, a, a very sincere attempt, attempt on my part to get feedback uh, directly from you and specifically students, uh, because I've got a lot of interaction. I have a lot of interaction with students for it via Twitter. So the question of the week will be on Twitter 
and it is a, 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 a you know an honest attempt to get some feedback. What, if, for example, today's question is, hey, we just went through this this uh, semester semester in quotation marks of virtual instruction. What worked and what didn't work? Okay, you're, and you're not going to hurt my feelings because uh, you know we we know it was an imperfect model. We want specific feedback regarding what worked, what didn't work. Lay it out there for us and let us know. So every every week will be different. And that is in addition to the surveying that we'll, we will be, you know, utilizing in order to better inform what our fall instructional model and everything that goes along with that looks like. Because, you know, under phase two, for example, if we were starting fall instruction uh, under phase two, it will look a lot different than what it might look like under phase three. Phase two is much more restrictive. And we would have to do things very differently in order to comply with state two phase two requirements. Okay, for example, uh, the transportation piece, they're talking about six feet of separation uh, on, on school buses. Well, that severely limits the number of kids we could transport uh, on the bus. So how do we address that? Do we address that by having multiple bus runs? Do we address that by encouraging folks our parents to carpool or, or not carpool to drive their children to school uh, or perhaps um, uh, I'm drawing a blank but there, there are lots of questions like that or I, I know it was stagger um, in other words you, you you're in a child may be in attendance one day and then the next day they're home receiving virtual instruction that's another option so there's lots of options we've got to we got to get feedback from you all as we move forward with that plan. Uh, last but not least, transcripts. I've heard some for, from, from some for, from people who said, um, "Hey, look, appreciate the message, but we don't we don't we don't have good enough internet service to um, you know watch your 10-minute video updates." Totally get that. Uh, I'm sure you're by now you're tired of seeing my face. Uh, anyway, um, so Tara, our PIO, she's. She, beginning last week, she was providing a transcript. I think she has been doing transcripts of these video updates. She'll continue to do that. So if you're in, one of, in that position of, um, excuse me, uh, of, of uh, not having the uh, resources to watch these, we'll do a, a transcript, and it's usually a day or two after the actual video. So that's it for now. Stay tuned for information coming later this week and for the next video update next week. Thank you and stay safe.